<laughs> All right. Hello, how are you guys doing today? My name is Peter. I'm the educational coordinator here at Lake Abides, as well as one of our zookeepers here. Uh, if you haven't been here before, we're located just north of Harrisburg, uh, about 30 minutes north of that. A great little family zoo. You guys should definitely come out once we fully open. And our first animal here is going to be one of my favorites. Uh, when I first came here to the zoo as just a little guest about five, six years ago, uh, he stood out to me uh, by just how cool he is and just the unique factor. And that's going to be our two-toed sloth, Chewy, back here. You want a piece of fruit? So two-toed sloths are a uh, family with, in the sloth family. There are actually two species of sloths. You have the two-toed, like Chewy, and then you have the three-toed sloth. And there's actually six total species of sloths coming from Central and South America. Just ignore our lemur in the back. He is jealous. He doesn't get the attention. But the two-toed sloths, like I said, they come from Central and South America. Now between the two species, though, there are some differences. And one of them is going to be how many toes do they have on their front legs. So Chewy does have two toes on his front arm right there. If Austin zooms in on that. And he has three toes on his back. While our three toes off, just have three toes on all four limbs. You want that, Chewy? Little fruit? Now, another major difference between the two is when they are active. The three toes off is diurnal. That means they're like you and I, where we are active during the day. While our two toed sloth, like Chewy here, as you see, he's a little slow and sluggish. That's because they are actually nocturnal. So just like bats, they do try to sleep during the day and do become more active during the nighttime period. So if you've been here before, you see that Chewy does live in our reptile and exotics building. This is where he spends his daytime. And during the night, he does have a bat enclosure where he does become more active and crawl around because surprisingly, he actually reached the fence back there and no one wants to find a sloth out by the bathrooms in the morning. So, if we could coax him up a little bit, we'll see if you want some fruit. You want some fruit? Here, Chewy. Want that? No? Maybe thinking about it? Now, they are really well adapted for this upside, upside down lifestyle. As you see Chewy here, this is where he is most naturally comfortable in this hanging position. His muscles, bones, and joints are really meant to support him in this position. They don't and cannot stand upright like how you and I walk or on all fours like dogs and cats. As you saw, those big, long nails, they can't support their body weight. So if they ever do end up on the ground, they actually have to drag and uh, crawl to find the next tree. So the muscles and bones are meant to hang upside down, and where you and I would get really dizzy in this upside down position, sloths are actually really comfortable. Most of their body and organ functions are actually near their backbone, so they do function a whole lot better in this upside down position. And if Chewie would move a little bit, you see that his hair actually splits along his belly. So it's much shorter on his belly than it is behind him. See how it's much more longer down here? If he moves a little bit, you see underneath his chin and on his chest there. Oh, there you go, a little piece of fruit. You see that it's much shorter. It does rain a lot in the rainforest, and with all that rain, it does accumulate. If you had a lot of hair there like other animals, it would uh, pool up and make them cold, wet, and damp. But with that long hair, it actually drips down and keeps them a lot drier out there in the rainforest. Now sloths, a lot of times people think sloths are in the monkey family or related to monkeys. They're actually not. They're in the Zethrinin family, which is actually means they're closely related to armadillos and aardvarks as well as anteaters. See those big nails? That big fancy word just means they have those long nails and they, uh, they use them. For chewy, it's hanging. For armadillos and anteaters, it's to dig. So they're actually more closely related to them than monkeys and apes and primates. So uh, that's a little cool fact there. And sloths, they actually only go to the bathroom about once a week. They live in the treetops of the rainforest, like I said, but they will come on down only once a week to go to the bathroom. 
That's because since they are so slow moving, they're actually really susceptible to predators, jaguars, big harpies, eagles, other things, snakes sometimes. So they don't like to come to the ground that often. They like to sit in the treetops. Now, you might be thinking, how are they actually safe in the treetops? Well, these guys are very, very good at camouflage. So, the rule now is nowadays is you have to wash your hands all the time, right? Well, unfortunately, sloths are not very good at washing their hands or taking showers. That's because they actually move so slow and it is so hot and humid in the rainforest that dirt, plants, moss, and algae will actually grow and accumulate into that fur, which is pretty gross. They're actually walking ecosystems, so they actually can support a lot of life uh, with them. So plants and algae grow in them. Uh, bugs as well as insects will actually live through their fur. Then all of a sudden other animals like other lizards and birds will actually come down and actually eat those little insects off of them. So they're really important to our ecosystem. So these guys unfortunately are listed on the endangered species list. So there are six species like I said. Some of them are least concerning and some of them are much more on the endangered species side. And a lot of that is due to human encroachment. So either that would be agriculture, so people um, making ways for farms and sustainable living for themselves, deforestation, illegally or illegally for paper products as well as that agricultural field, as well as just ecotourism and illegal pet trade. So they are very cool animals. I know everyone always goes, oh, a sloth is my spirit animal. They don't move a lot, they like to sleep and they like to eat, guilty as charged, but it's not very good for them living, unfortunately. So all that ecotourism, people taking them as pets, seeing that it's really cool to have, as well as just uh, littering in the rainforest or going to those places where people and animals are in close connection, they become habituated and unfortunately that can lead to other disasters. Yeah, no. So they are an herbivore, so they do eat any sort of plant material, leaves, um, flowers, fruits in the wild. Here at the zoo, we do give him a variety of fruits, as well as he'll get a biscuit, which does have a lot of vitamins and minerals to give him a well-balanced diet. Now they are one of the slowest animals in the world, moving-wise, and one of the slowest animals metabolism-wise. Number one is actually the three-toed sloth. They have the slowest metabolism in the world. Number two is actually the great pandas out in there in China. And then Chewy here, our two-toed sloth, is actually the third slowest metabolism. Since they don't use a lot of energy moving around like you and I do, they don't need to burn that much uh, calories. So they don't eat a lot because they don't move a lot. Yes, no. So that is all we have for our uh, questions, our, our info right now. We will open up to you guys for any questions you have on Chewy, on conservation of the sloths, anything like that. So we do have Jan here that will be reading off some of the questions. I uh, hope you guys, you got some? I do have All right. Hannah, I believe she's six years old from Hannah, wants to know, do they grow slow just like they move slow? They do, they, so Chewy here, uh, might answer some other questions. Uh, Chewy here is around 19 or 20. Uh, he's right there at the middle of the uh, age range for him. And no, they don't grow as slow as you might think. So he's near this middle to higher end of age. Uh, animals in the wild, they like to grow kind of fast. They gotta get up to size uh, to make sure they can fend for themselves. So they don't move as slow, as, they don't grow as slow as they actually move. Here's another one for you. How old is he? You said 19 or 20? Yep, he's around 19 and 20. Do they get their nails trimmed? Good question. So, out in the wild, uh, there's a lot of harder materials, uh, different things that they can actually uh, rub their nails on, more rocks, uh, different types of tree bark that might be a little harder. So in the wild, that will wear down naturally. If you're just trying to think of your dogs uh, walking on concrete, their nails will file down pretty naturally. Uh, for sloths in captivity though, a lot of times you don't have to cut their nails, uh, but you can. So every handful of years, uh, we'll just trim their nails just so he has a good way to get on and off of these branches. Can you come a little closer? Come here. 
Peter, Whitney would like to know, how do you tell that sloths are boys or girls? Good question. So a lot of that is internal. So uh, you would have to go into their one little hole to see if it's a male or a female. All right, and Michelle would like to know, what does that fur feel like? Good question. Um, it's not as soft as you think. So Chewy here, uh, he's been a resident here at the park for many, many years, uh, going on what, 11, 14, around there. And everyone, he's always a favorite. And he's so close here and everyone wants to touch him. Uh, he's like a grumpy old man uh, who doesn't, who likes to be left alone. And we always tell people what he feels like is very coarse and wiry. He's not as soft as you think. Peter, Carrie wants to know what you're feeding him right now. Good question. So, he's getting some plum. Uh, plum is actually one of his favorite fruits he'll get, so he's getting some cut up plum. And uh, mango is another one of his top favorites, but uh, plum is his absolute favorite, so. Bobby would like to know, are sloths typically solitary animals, or do they stick with their pack when in the wild? Good question. So how we have to practice social distancing right now, sloths are the expert at social distancing. They are solitary animals, they live by themselves, all species of sloths live by themselves. Uh, they will only come together to mate. So we want to emanate sloths and be distant from other people uh, for our own safety nowadays. Uh, but they are definitely live by themselves and once that male comes with that female, that male will then go off and leave and then mom will be left with baby uh, for a year or so, baby, that baby will live on mom's chest. Uh, they'll actually give birth upside down, and the baby will hold on to mom's belly, and then they'll go off, uh, then once the baby's big enough, they'll be off on their own. So yeah, they do live by themselves. We have a question from Christina. She wants to know, do sloths have different colors of fur than brown? Uh, they, they have a variety of shades. Um, a lot of it's tan brown, it's kind of a darker brown to black. Uh, that's their kind of natural color, as you'll see. Like I said, they will grow algae in them, so they will be actually a greenish color sometimes. Come here, Chewie. Want to come over? And Peter, Jaden wants to know how many babies do they have? One. Come on. Want to come this way? Aaron is asking us, are koalas and sloths in the same family? I do not know that answer for sure, but I would say no because they're in the same family as armadillos and aardvarks and uh, anteaters. So I'm not sure about koalas, what family they're in, uh, but I know that they're more closely related to those animals. All right, and Noah, age four, wants to know why their nose looks like a pig nose. That is a great question. Uh, so that's just kind of how they're made up. So. Their nose, uh, they do have pretty poor eyesight, so they do rely heavily on other factors, and one of them is smelling. Uh, not that they have a very special unique nose that could rough through things or pick up certain smells, something different than other animals, but uh, it's just how they look. So you and I have different noses, your parents have different shaped noses, they just have a little different shaped nose than the other sloths and then just other animals in general. Okay, a question, from, a question from Whitney. Why does a sloth hang upside down? Yeah, so they're well adapted. So uh, that's just how their body's made up. Uh, you and I are made to walk upright, you know, and uh, dogs and cats walk on all fours. Sloths, their body's just meant to hang. So their muscles and bones and joints and how their body is constructed, they're meant to hang, as well as other adaptations. Hopefully if he gets up and moves over here, you finally got him up and moving. Come here, Chewy. You'll see how well he actually moves. He almost uh, is very fluid. Come here, Chewy. You want to come this way? Come on, Chewy. He's very fluid while he moves upside down. Peter, Bobby would like to know how long do sloths babies stay with their mothers, and are they a marsupial, like a koala or a kangaroo? Good question. They are not a marsupial. They do not have a pouch. Uh, the baby's not born in the pouch. There's no pouch to them. Uh, so they're not a marsupial. And it could range uh, about a year-ish time until they're big enough uh, then to be on their own. Come here, Chewie. A little further. Come on. All the way over here. You got stuck. Come on. Up here, Chewie. Okay. Kara would like to know, since sloths are nocturnal, 
What does Chewie usually do during the night? Good question. So uh, he does have a nighttime enclosure, and that is when we feed him as well. So he gets his full meal uh, at night. Uh, so during the day, he'll sleep down here on the uh, bottom shelf. He'll sleep in the basket. He normally likes this little nook here as well. He'll sleep here during the day. Uh, he might get up for our shows. If you've been here for our shows, uh, it's always up to him. It's always up to the animal discretion. So he may get up. He may not get up. Uh, so if he does get up, he will normally do the show and he goes right back to bed. So at night, we transfer him in his special transfer box uh, to his nighttime enclosure, which is uh, behind the doors over there in our uh, back area, which is fully enclosed. It's about half of this. Uh, so then he could be active. So he'll crawl around. He will eat his dinner. He will uh, just do his normal sloth things. And we have our last question for today, Peter. Jess is asking, her daughters are watching Kenya and Mara, and they want to know if the sloth has a defense mechanism to protect themselves from anything in the wild. Good question. So uh, what they say is a good offense is uh, a good offense is a great defense. So their, their defense is camouflage. So they want to stay hidden. So they'll have all that algae. They don't move a lot. They like to sit still. Uh, so the best thing for them is to be camouflaged and hidden. Now, unfortunately, if something does find them, uh, they do have those very long arms. Uh, shoot, you want to just be screwed in here? They do have very long arms where if he would come down, uh, he could reach very, very far. So they'll actually swipe at other animals, like birds that are getting too close. But the best thing for them is just not to be seen at all. All right, thank you, Janet. So that does uh, conclude our time here for Zoo View. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. It's our first one. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Give you guys something different in your day. We will be doing more next week, uh, so definitely stay tuned. And here at the zoo, uh, especially our education department, we always like to say connect, protect, and change. Connect with your favorite animal, learn about them, protect your uh, wildlife in your backyard, protect things across the globe. Uh, this is not our planet, it is their planet. We're just living in it, uh, and we want to change the future for them. You know, We want to make sure that uh, these guys are here for our kids and our future generations, and we want to make sure that we protect everything, uh, because not only our world, it's also theirs, and uh, we got to help them out. we got to speak for those who cannot be spoken for. So thank you guys for coming out. I hope you guys enjoyed us. Uh, like I said, stay tuned to uh, our Facebook post uh, for future zoo views. And uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to ask us around, all right? Thank you guys. Have a good day. Be safe.